Community Matters here at 4 o'clock on a given Tuesday. <laughs> okay. We are honored today to have uh, Provost Matthew Liao Troth from Hawaii Pacific University with us. We have a, a long and um, uh, uh, affectionate relationship with HPU. We are so glad to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much coming down. And my co-host, Carol Mon Lee, uh, who is an academician in her own right, is here to make sure we cover the ground. <laughs> Welcome, co-host Carol Mon Lee. Thank you. So nice to be here. Okay. So, news. The first thing is always news. Yes. You have, as of what, July 1st? You a, have new a new president. A new president. president. John, Tell, John Katanda. Tell us about him. So, John Katanda is a Roosevelt High School graduate. He's returning to Hawaii after almost 30 years off island. He uh, is a graduate of uh, another school on island I will <laughs> not mention. Uh, but. Uh, uh, went off to uh, Washington, D.C. as an attorney, uh, was very successful in that, moved into academia, was a college professor, and ended up being uh, the dean of the law school at Villanova University. So wow. uh, we're really happy to bring him back home to Hawaii. Does that kind of bio sound familiar to you, Carol Bunley? <laughs> Let's see, it goes from practicing law, being a lawyer, to being an academician, academician. To going to law school and all, I mean, going into a law school. And, Right. Sounds like you. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> he's gone on to bigger and better things, and we look forward to having him downtown with us. Yeah, <laughs> he's very happy to be back. He and his family are very happy to be back yeah. to Ireland. Island. And it was a seamless transition uh, uh, from uh, Jeffrey uh, Bannister, Bannister, who yes. who was there one day meeting with you, and the following day, yes, uh, uh, my last meeting John on Katana Thursday, the thirtieth of June, was with uh, <laughs> Jeff Bannister. My first meeting on Friday at. at uh, morning was uh, with John Gatanda. Now you are the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at HPU. How does this affect, you know, your job, if at all? Um, it affects everything. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, uh, part of my job is to make sure that things keep on moving along. Uh, I have two real different roles. Provost um, it's an old archaic word for the person who used to lock up the faculty and students in the monasteries. Um, so Perfect. <laughs> it's a great title. There, there's even provost jails out there that, I, that I've seen. Um, so provost, I'm overseeing kind of the whole student experience from students coming into the university, in class, in their co-curricular activities and housing, continuing on through career services, placement, internships, and then getting jobs and handing them off to alumni. Um, academic affairs specifically is uh, working with the faculty, developing the curriculum, uh, supervising the degrees we offer, the academic integrity and research integrity of the institution. So they're very complementary roles. So as a new president comes in, they're going to, of course, change kind of the leadership, you know, they're going to affect the leadership vision of the institution. Um, they're going to really kind of rally us all into, you know, where we're going to go next. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of what I do is put that into practice. And so, you know, these are the degrees we're going to offer. These are what we're going to do to make sure our students are successful. Sounds like a chief operating officer, doesn't it? In some ways, although I don't really deal with facilities other than making sure that we have, you know, okay. desks and classrooms. <laughs> okay. Do you okay. see any changes in academic affairs as a result of the change in leadership? Uh, I, um, I don't think uh, we're going to have a change in academic affairs. I think we're still going to have a very strong focus on academic integrity, integrity, mm -hmm. the quality of the academic experience, mm -hmm. making sure that um, students have a valuable, a transformative experience at mm -hmm. Hawaii Pacific University. I think you know anyone coming to the role of president is going to bring a slightly different perspective based on their experience. And so Jeff Bannister uh, was at uh, Boston University and president at Butler University before he came to HPU. So he was bringing a president's experience from a regional university similar to our own uh, in Indianapolis urban school where he had really focused on that. Uh, John Gatanda is local returning and so he really sees having gone to the mainland and seeing some successful universities coming back and integrating that into what it means to be the urban university of Honolulu. And so, I, so I, I, you know, complementary roles of what they're doing. Hmm. So, you know, other things are happening. I'd like to cover them with you. Uh, for example, you sold, it was in the newspapers, mm -hmm. uh, the Hawaii Loa campus uh, in Kailua, and you're kind of consolidating, but also expanding here downtown. Um, and we know that you're in a, a Pioneer Plaza because mm -hmm. uh, our studio used to be where the business school is now. Yes. Now the business school is there. It's really nice space. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, the process of this consolidation, what, what exactly is happening, and especially with regard to Aloha Tower? Sure. Uh, the university adopted a new uh, master plan for the institution in 2014, and part of that master plan was to consolidate the academic programs downtown. 
right now one of the big challenges for the students is they have a class at eight o'clock downtown they have a class oh, at ten o'clock sure. at Hawaii Loa. Yeah. you have to jump on the shuttle oh, go back goodness, and forth gracious, yeah. you live at Hawaii Loa, so you get up you come down go, mm -hmm. go to class go back dining halls over there but then you have an afternoon class so it's really messy from a student experience perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. and so in 2014 as part of our master plan we decided we would consolidate all academic programs downtown um, since 2014, we, we were really focused on opening up Aloha Tower Marketplace, getting the student residences in there, and so we opened up last fall in 2015 with the student residences. We have had classes there for the past year in the multi-purpose rooms. We have a learning commons there. So it, we have an anchor downtown. Now it's time to focus back on bringing the rest of the academic programs downtown. Uh, Hawaii Loa College and eight, um, was a beneficiary from the Castle Foundation, uh, just as Castle Medical was. So it was a natural relationship mm -hmm. to really look at how we could best serve the Windward community. Uh, we already have a relationship with Castle Medical. You know, our, our nursing students do clinical oh, care sure. and, and, and such. And you're going to offer a PhD in nursing comes soon. A, a doctor of nursing practice. I'm sorry. I'll be, I'll be, don't want to get in trouble with my practice. accreditors. But okay, all right. It will not be a PhD. It will be a doctor of nursing practice. <laughs> okay. uh, but yes, yeah, as the... Um, Nursing has continued to professionalize, and starting in 2020, the terminal degree in nursing will be the doctorate in nursing practice. And mm -hmm. so we, we want to make sure we can offer that for That's our That's great. Our we nurses. need nurses here. Yes. Yeah. But the instruction will all be downtown then, by then. Yes. Well, you know, a lot of clinical work is done uh, either at, at the hospitals and also for that particular degree, we'll have a lot of online components. And so we offer... Um, several of our degrees, we actually offer 17 degrees fully online, and so several of the classes for the Doctor of Nursing practice will be online as well, designed for a low residency student so they can be a working, practicing nurse and complete their doctorate. And, and they would actually uh, participate with local hospitals for this degree? Uh, they, depending on their need for clinical hours and such, they might be working at a local hospital, for example, and need to move from a Master of Science in Nursing to a Doctor of Nursing practice. Okay. They're going to be a center in that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I remember you were heavily involved in the Progress Building. Is the Progress Building part of this, um, you know, campus going forward? Yeah, so the Model Progress Building is part of our footprint on Fort Street Mall. We actually have our, um, most of our College of Liberal Arts is located in the Model Progress Building. We actually opened up um, uh, three uh, science labs, actually, over the summer, in the late spring and early summer we've developed, and those will be opening up this fall. Uh, so we're bringing some of the sciences downtown already. And so, you know, we, we really want to look at, you know, plan and uh, implement the plan that makes sense for our downtown footprint so the students have kind of a contiguous university experience yes. downtown. Well, it reminds me of GBA. That's, uh, I went to NYU Law School mm -hmm. and uh, yes. I knew GBA pretty well. That's the Graduate Business Administration School. And they were a Wall Street school. Mm -hmm. They were right in the middle of Wall Street and, uh, you know, their, their students came from Wall Street and went to Wall Street and, and, and spent their lunch times rubbing shoulders with Wall Street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a Wall Street campus and a Wall Street school and that's what it sounds like you're doing. You're going to be a mm -hmm. down, you are now a yes. downtown university. Yes, and I think NYU is a great example of an urban university really having a positive impact in a downtown community, not just business, but also the sciences, also the liberal arts. I mean, where's the, where's the center of the performing arts in Hawaii? It's in Honolulu. It's yeah, right yeah, downtown. Yeah. So, you know, being able to make those connections, being able to walk out of class in social work and go have an impact on the community is really going to be a, a huge plus. It's for actually university. brilliant. Yes. You know, because you, you'll, you'll be right here and there's all kinds of synergy involved yes. being in the business community uh, having this kind of focused downtown experience um, there's jobs there's, uh, there's there's student possibilities there's all kinds of events going on and you can do events and and you can rub shoulders with the business community that's really important so I think this is a um, great direction, actually. Yeah. Great well, direction. And, you know, and even if you look at the liberal arts, you know, where else can you actually do an internship in history? We have a lot of historical centers and locations in downtown Honolulu where we have guided tours for, for tourists and things. So there's a public mm -hmm. history as aspect. So it can really actually practice all of the liberal arts, both do them intellectually, but actually practice them and convey you know, enrich people's lives through, you know, our studies in the liberal arts. A moment on history. John Davidan yes. has appeared on our show many times. Yes. And I want to tell you now, he's great. He's <laughs> That's good to hear. That's beautiful good to teacher. Hear. I minored in history and I really care about history. And um, he's, he's a great teacher and a great guest on our shows. Yes. 
You mentioned tours, um, Matthew, and I heard something about a Chinatown tour that you do. Is that something that you're... Uh, we've had one of our faculty members uh -huh. uh, over time do, do tours of Chinatown and uh, s uh, specific locations in Chinatown. So it's not, you know, it's not something we do all the time, but it ties into our classes and, and the student experience at HPU. Yeah. We want our students to really understand Hawaii and uh, you know the impact that we have in the Pacific and so that's actually part of our new gen ed it's something required not necessarily taking a tour of Chinatown but how all of this ties together how what we do is unique and important here and, and I know you also have another campus right the Oceanic Institute yes Can you tell yeah. us about that and so the Oceanic Institute is really focused on aquaculture, um, how we actually, uh, as society moves forward, how we can help feed the world with, with ocean Maybe products. Share with our audience. So if you go out, um, if you head, head out to the windward side, go past Makapu'u Point, uh, you'll hit the Oceanic Institute. Actually, if you're coming around from that way, the first thing you'll see is Sea Life Park, which actually is a tenant of ours uh, <laughs> at, at that property. Uh, but we do a lot of um, a very applied research there. So we. Uh, most of the white shrimp that people eat in restaurants comes from uh, our brood stock from research that came out of the Oceanic Institute. Around the world. Around the world. Around the world. Those shrimp come from here and they're grown in Thailand and other places mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia and the market is the world. Yes. And they're the best in the world. Am I right about <laughs> this? They are the best in the world. Thank <laughs> right you. here from Oceanic <laughs> Institute. Um, other things we've done is uh, we successfully bred a yellow tang. Uh, so right now, if yellow tang, yeah, the little ornamental fish that you have in in uh, you know in fish tanks and such, the mm -hmm. yellow fish. Right now, um, if you want to have one of those fish, you buy it at a pet store. They're going divers are going off the coast of the Big Island and taking them off the reefs, and so it's very hurtful of the reefs when you have over essentially farming of the um, yellow tang there. So we're the first place to actually breed yellow tang in, in captivity. Where there's a couple on display at the Waikiki Aquarium. Um, and th actually, uh, I think last week, uh, a school in Florida, uh, with our help, actually uh, bred uh, royal tang, the blue tang, the dory tang from finding Nemo and finding dory, following our procedure for breeding yellow tang. And so we're, having, we're creating a way to, in a sustainable way, breed ornamental fish. So How exciting. Yeah. It's a big business, ornamental fish. Yeah, it's pretty but, but fish in general is going to be a bigger and bigger business. I mean, we haven't realized our potential not nearly in, uh, in open ocean aquaculture. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like uh, Oceanic Institute can really participate in that going forward. Um, there's an industry, you know, that, that will happen ultimately as we fish yes. out the oceans. Um, and you guys can be part of that, a big part of that, I think, in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. It, Oceanic Institute is doing a lot of really neat projects. One other one I do want to mention is something we're running on the Big Island. We're running a, um, essentially a feed mill using ocean products, so developing cattle feed. Because right now, for the cattle on the Big Island and over on Kauai, we bring the feed over from you know the continental U.S. Expensive, and so we're actually uh, do researching using ocean products to develop a cattle feed, Great so idea. that we can just pull it locally and feed the cattle. Yeah, save a lot of money and make an industry possible here. Yes. So where do you do it on the Big Island? Is that it's part uh, in of Hilo? It? It's a uh, it's actually a long term project that the Oceanic Institute has been working on. Nice. That same feed can be useful for aquaculture, aquaculture, mm -hmm. open ocean aquaculture yes. as well. Yeah. Sorry, Carol. Yeah. No, I was just fascinated. And as far as the um, different locations that you have, do you have students who go out to these different areas, to Oceanic and to the Big Island for these? What, what are they studying? What is their field? Right. So uh, we actually offer undergraduate degrees in marine biology. We offer also offer a master's degree in marine science and an undergraduate degree in oceanography. So students in those three areas generally are working on these different products, uh, projects. Uh, we do have uh, students who do work out at the Oceanic Institute. Um, our marine sciences program, a lot of our labs that our students work in are out at the Oceanic Institute as well in, as in uh, Kaneohe. Um, they haven't been as, as involved with the feed mill. We just actually got that. Uh, we're building that right now. It's been a multi-year project, but it actually is going operational this year. Mm. Let's talk a little about your students, because I know in the past, HPU was very um, popular for students from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And is that the case now? What's the percentage yes. student body of local versus national and international? Yeah. So on, um, on main campus, about 17% of our students are international. About international, international, mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna have to now have to back out the numbers. And roughly 40% are coming from off island and 40% on island. 
we also have a fair number of students uh, on military bases doing uh, degrees with us part-time. But if I'm looking at main campus, we roughly have 4,000 undergraduate students and 1,000 graduate students, and then another roughly 1,500 military students. Well, you know, that, uh, that whole experience with uh, the international students coming into Hawaii has given you, maybe it's all intended, uh, but a, a global perspective on yes. things. And we have seen that here on Think Tank. We've seen your global perspective in a number of ways. And when we get back from this break, we're going to explore exactly how that works and why. We'll Sounds be good. right back with Mas Provo Provost Matthew Liao Troth of HPU. Hello, I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me every Thursday at 1 o'clock for Global Connections, where I talk to a variety of guests and range through many issues from contemporary, international, political events, things talking about national security, um, all sorts of international issues, and also more local issues, history, and so on. I look forward to having you join me and talking with some of my guests. Thank you. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may have not otherwise met, helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. We're back, we're live, we're here with Provost Matthew Liao Troth, who is the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs of Hawaii Pacific University. We are delighted to have him with us. It's great to be here. So one of the things uh, we'd like to cover, I think, is, uh, is this sort of global view that HPU does. And somehow it seems to be related to the fact that you have a substantial percentage, and you have had over years, a substantial percentage of international students here. But you also go out what I mean is we met a number of your students and graduates who have gone with the State Department and had really promising careers. Um, we have Patrick Bratton, who runs a program called uh, Global Connections here on ThinkTech, and who gets out and about all over the world. Um, Carlos Suarez uh, was also involved in that program, and he got out all over the world doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was it, a, uh, a, a, um, a program in Austria. Mm -hmm and in Poland and throughout uh, Europe, actually. There's a Fulbright Scholar. A Fulbright, Fulbright Scholar, yes. I was trying to think. And, um, and most recently, um, you know, we deal with a graduate of yours every couple of weeks who works for Brian Schatz in Brian Schatz's office in Washington. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Russell Kekoa, uh, Russell Kekoa Kohler. Mm -hmm. He's a graduate of HPU and very knowledgeable about foreign affairs and about specifically about what's happening in Turkey. And as you know, there's a lot of yeah. things going on in Turkey. He reports to us. I mean, so what I'm saying is that, you know, connect the dots. And HPU has a, a, a real serious global consciousness and is graduating people who are going out and doing what I think, you know, young grads should, should do anyway, participate in global activities uh, in the State Department, diplomacy, whatnot. Uh, is this part of your long-term plan? Yes. Um, we actually... Uh, we're honored to, for the last several years, be recognized as the most diverse university in the United States. And a key part of that diversity is international diversity as well as geographic diversity in general. Uh, we revised our general education program a couple of years ago to really emphasize the global and the multinational and the multiple perspectives um, that you really get in a true liberal education. And so it's, uh, we really challenge our students in that way. We really push them in that way. Uh, we have lots of students from the mainland, as well as local students, as well as the international students who are coming here because of that reputation. They want to be in a class where someone is from one country is here, someone from local is here, someone from the continental U.S. is here, and in front and behind them are people from other places as well. So you can have really broad-ranging conversations in any class about any topic. It's, it's great. Really, it's really great. I mean, we need this. Hawaii needs to be an international center, and you are actually graduating an international generation right. that way. Um, and speaking of which, um, you know, somehow um, HPU and maybe you individually got in the, in the Hawaii Pacific Business, uh, Hawaii Business Magazine's Black Book, oh, yes. the top <laughs> 250 uh, businesses. How does that work? What is that? Uh, so it's, um, it's a, a program that they run about the top employers and top uh, businesses in the state. And uh, HPU is a large university, a large employer. We have 
hundreds and hundreds of employees. We're the largest uh, tenant downtown, actually, because we are we're in multiple buildings across, yeah. you know, up and down Fort Street, Bishop Street, and yeah. Aloha Tower Drive. They're everywhere. So, and Baratania <laughs> as well. So we're uh, the so NYU of Honolulu. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> and growing. <laughs> and growing. Um, and so it's a. Um, so the, it's just a recognition program they do, they do for uh, impactful businesses and employers in the state. And I was uh, one of the pe I was the person from Hawaii Pacific University that uh, was rolled into that last year. Congratulations! Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, so going to Aloha Tower, mm -hmm. can you give me a, a walkthrough on on how it is evolving, what it's going to be like? Can I still go to the restaurants there? Yeah. Uh, how, how is it changing? Um, what, is, what does it mean to Aloha Tower? What does it mean to the university? And what are we going to do with that park? <laughs> oh, oh, throw me a curveball oh, there. No, okay. No, no, um, so, it, it, you know, HP was really proud to be the steward of this property, of Aloha Tower Marketplace. Um, you know, it's nice that the evening news every night shows our campus. We, we really appreciate that. Um, we had uh, 270 students move in last year for the first residence uh, living upstairs and uh, in less than a month. What we a all beautiful have, dormitory. Huh? Yes, we had parents dropping off last year saying, I'm sending my kids home, <laughs> I'm moving in. Uh, <laughs> next group, you know, we've had students living in there during the summer. We have new students moving in this fall for the new semester. It's really exciting. And it's not just students coming from off island. We actually have some students who are local who've lived at home for college, saving their money, but so their senior year, they wanted to live, you know, have that college experience. And so as seniors, they're living at Aloha Tower Marketplace. It's, it's, a, really, it's a real draw, I'm it's, sure, to live near the water there, it's a beautiful location. Yes, well, and uh, you know, we're, we've been joking about it for the past week, but we have our own gym, a Pokemon gym, <laughs> <laughs> right, right there in Aloha Tower Marketplace. Um, downstairs, we have, um, we, we still have the shops, we still have the restaurants, we have a couple who are uh, under letters of intent for moving in and all that. Our big focus was getting the students in because we, we purchased this property specifically for the students. We wanted to make sure the student space was up and running first. Uh, and so we have multiple kind of, we're in discussions and letters of intent for multiple uh, businesses coming in. I can't talk about who they are, but we do have downstairs, we have, you know, the Welcome Center, so the campus tours start from there, going up Fort Street Mall. We have our Learning Commons, kind of the, the contemporary library of the future, essentially there. We have a lounge. We have three multi-purpose rooms that are used by community organizations as well as uh, by students. Uh, we have some classes in there, we do events there, and then we have community partners using this space as well. So, so the really community organizations can use it for, is there a charge or how does that work? There is. Um, that's, that's one of the few things that's not under the provost portfolio. Okay. But, it, but yeah, so there's a, there's a whole process. So if you go to, um, the, there's a separate w uh, website for Aloha Tower Marketplace for uh, doing that. And I will make sure I get that information to you also. We can share that. Um, I believe it's uh, email at aloha tower at hpu.edu to inquire about oh, cool. community uh, community and business meetings uh, in that uh, What a great idea, spot. actually, because yeah. it is ideal. I mean, so many reasons. But, um, you know, uh, do you mind if we come around with cameras? We, we really like sure. to sure. do a little OC16 show at uh, Aloha Tower. That would be great. Like. The, new, the new Aloha right. Tower. Our bookstore is there. It's, um, oh, there's right. a CrossFit yeah. lo uh, 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 location opening up, so it's really neat. It's really Have you closed the Hawaii Loa dorms? No, no, Not we, yet. no. I, you know, we we've um, entered into this relationship with Castle Medical, um, but we're going to be there for several years there. Really? Okay. Yes, and so incoming students, um, you know, from the freshmen coming in this fall, they will probably still have uh, still be at Hawaii Loa four years from now. It's it's a multi-year relationship. So I see. so there there's a uh, we will be leasing space, and you know, there, it's a long-term relationship between. But you both. have a regular shuttle that goes between the both campuses. Yes, three to four an hour. So it's a uh, and. So, yeah, it's very, it's, it's helpful to get back and forth um, because we really want people to have, not be reliant on cars, um, but, you know, it, it does, adds one more thing to a student's life. Yeah. Getting oh, back great. and forth. And it's a beautiful location. Yes. So you have that, the dormitories, I guess uh, that, the, that's the principal use right now of the mm -hmm. Hawaii, uh, Hawaii, uh, And office Hawaii space, Loa. too, is that well, right? Is so that where at, your offices are? So at uh, Hawaii Loa, we have um, 190 uh, bed dorms, uh, dining hall, and then we have uh, the academic center building there, which has um, a couple of science labs, some uh, science lab classrooms, and then our uh, nursing simulation lab is there, as well as faculty offices for uh, health and so College of Health and Society and the College of Natural and Computational Sciences on the natural sciences side. 
yeah. some athletic fields mm -hmm. too. So it's a migration. I mean, yes. in a few years' time, everybody would be downtown. They won't yes. be there anymore. So and where's your office? Uh, my office is on one of the buildings up Fort Street. <laughs> uh, not at Aloha Tower no, and no. not at Hawaii Law, but right, right, <laughs> and yes. not in this building, not in Pioneer Plaza. No, I'm, I'm at, actually at 1164 Bishop Street. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, HPU has been in that building for a long time. And mm -hmm. yes. So we have, we have up the Progress building, we have 1164. Pioneer we have Plaza. Pioneer Plaza, we have Aloha Tower. Hawaii Loa. I know you can't tell us what's next. Oh, well, well, we already have Model Progress. We have the Fort Street Center. We have the Lower Bishop Building. We have the Kui <laughs> Plaza. I mean, we, we, and then there's the military bases where we're in. And the building. military bases. Right. We have facilities. Yeah, we, we have offices for um, to service our students, and then we have you know, there's shared classrooms uh, for anyone who's uh, offering classes on the military bases. Neighbor islands. Uh, we primarily serve neighbor islands through online. Um, oh yeah, let's talk about online for a minute. Sure. Uh, what, what do you offer uh, online these days? How big a part of your curriculum is online? So we actually offer eight associate's degrees fully online, and those are targeted primarily port towards uh, part-time students, um, primarily on the military basis. But you know, they can start there, they can transfer to Texas or St. Louis sure. or D.C. and finish up with us. We also offer several um, bachelor's degrees, uh, business administration, psychology, computer science, um, public administration, human resources development, criminal justice, and I'm sure I'm missing one in there. <laughs> it's like going you have through. a prominent alum from the online program we had talked about. Yes, uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is uh, uh, an alum of ours. She actually did most of her coursework either while deployed in the Middle East or in deployed in Washington, D.C. And uh, it, it's really nice to be able to help serve someone who's serving the U.S. The US by, I, I bet she uh, did very well, well in her classes. She did. How, how long I, would I, it I take? For FERPA reasons, I can't tell you her grades, but, <laughs> but all of her professors say great things about her. Shout out to Tulsi. <laughs> Good work, Tulsi. About how long did it take for her or would it take typically to finish a degree online part-time? Uh, part-time, it really depends on how many classes you're taking part-time, whether you're going full year or part year. So you could, I mean, you could finish a whole degree in three years. That's a little, that's pretty aggressive though and, and, and hard to work while doing that. But it's pretty easy to, you know, if you're going half-time, then you could do it over six years if you're taking classes during the summer, fall, winter, spring. You didn't bring any application forms with you, Matthew? <laughs> hpu.edu. <laughs> hpu.edu. <laughs> Apply <laughs> here. Click the button. <laughs> so take a minute and talk to camera one over there and, yeah. uh, and, tell, and tell the people, you know, where uh, HPU is going. What's the general vision? I know it's early for John Cotanda, but yeah. so as, as it exists today, where is HPU going? We are Honolulu's university. We are serving the downtown area. We are providing kind of the, the urban experience. We are the center of the Pacific Rim. So we are pulling people from around the world for an American liberal arts education with a distinctive Hawaii flavor to it uh, to really build global citizens who are going to make this a better place. We have students from Northern Europe, Northern Asia, Southern Asia, South America, North America, Africa all around coming here and gathering in the gathering spot to really make a difference at HPU. And we're really proud of our students. We have great faculty, great staff, and we really want our students to be successful. Fabulous. And here we are in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to cover you, Matthew. Yes. Watch out for us. That would be great. We're going to talk to you lots more. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you, Matthew.